Imagine a scenario. It is a Tuesday morning in November. You wake up, reach for your phone, and open your crypto exchange app. You're expecting the usual volatility, maybe a 5% dip, maybe a green candle. But what you see defies logic. You see a straight vertical line down. Bitcoin isn't trading at $60,000. It isn't trading at $20,000. It is trading at zero. You try to refresh the page. Server error, you check Twitter. It is a meltdown. But this isn't a typical bear market crash. This isn't a regulatory ban or a billionaire selling their stash. This is something far more catastrophic. The headlines are screaming, blockchain compromised, Satoshi's wallet empty, global encryption failure. It turns out, the immutable ledger that holds over a trillion dollars of human wealth wasn't immutable after all. The digital lock protecting your life savings didn't just get picked, it got vaporized. For over a decade, we have told ourselves a comforting story, that Bitcoin is unhackable, that the mathematics securing the network, the cryptographic walls guarding the blockchain are so thick that no supercomputer on earth could breach them in a billion years. And that was true. It was true for the technology of yesterday, but today, in supercooled laboratories from California to Hefei, humanity is birthing a new kind of machine. A machine that defies the laws of classical physics. A machine that treats our impossible mathematical problems like a warm-up exercise. We're talking about quantum computing, and the question haunting the intelligence agencies and financial institutions isn't if this technology will break the internet. The question is when. This is the story of the coming Q-Day and the desperate race to save Bitcoin before the clock runs out. To understand the threat, we first have to look back. History teaches us one undeniable lesson. There is no such thing as an unbreakable code. In ancient Rome, Julius Caesar used a simple substitution cipher to protect his military orders. For centuries, it was considered secure. Then, mathematicians used frequency analysis to break it. In World War II, the Nazis believed their Enigma machine was invincible. It generated millions of possible combinations every day. But Alan Turing and the team at Bletchley Park built the first protocomputers and cracked it shortening the war by years. Every time humanity builds a better shield, someone invents a sharper sword. The shield protecting Bitcoin today is called elliptic curve cryptography, specifically the CCP256K1 curve. Without getting too bogged down in the math, think of it like a one-way function. It is incredibly easy to mix ingredients to bake a cake, but it is impossible to take a baked cake and unmix it back into flour, eggs, and sugar. In Bitcoin terms, it is easy to take your private key and generate a public key. But to go backward, to look at a public key on the blockchain and reverse engineer the private key, that is the unbaking the cake problem. For a classical computer, like the one in your pocket or the most powerful supercomputer at NASA, this problem is hard, incredibly hard. If you task the Summit supercomputer to crack a single Bitcoin private key using brute force, it would take longer than the lifespan of the universe. That massive, incomprehensible barrier of time is your security. It is the only reason Bitcoin has value. We trust the math because the math takes too long to solve. But what if you had a machine that didn't experience time the same way? Enter the quantum computer. If you walk into a quantum laboratory at Google or IBM, you won't see a sleek server rack. You'll see something that looks like a golden chandelier, a steampunk work of art hanging from the ceiling. This structure is a cryostat designed to cool the processor at the bottom to temperatures colder than deep space near absolute zero. Why? Because these machines operate on the edge of reality. Classical computers are binary. They think in bits, zero or one, heads or tails, on or off. They solve problems sequentially, checking one possibility after another. One, then two, then three. Quantum computers use qubits. Thanks to a spooky principle of quantum mechanics called superposition, a qubit doesn't have to be just zero or one. It can be zero and one simultaneously. Imagine you are looking for a specific grain of sand on a beach. A classical computer is like a person picking up one grain at a time, examining it, and throwing it away. It takes forever. A quantum computer is like a wave washing over the entire beach at once, locating the specific grain instantly. In 1994, mathematician Peter Shor wrote an algorithm 
a set of instructions for these machines. Shor's algorithm proved that a sufficiently stable quantum computer could turn the impossible math of elliptic curve cryptography into a trivial calculation. It turns the billions of years' defense into hours. Suddenly, the lock on the front door of the internet is gone. And this doesn't just break Bitcoin, it breaks everything. Your bank account, your encrypted messages, national power grids, nuclear launch codes, they all use the same fundamental encryption standards. But for Bitcoin, the consequences are unique because Bitcoin is money. And unlike a bank, there is no customer support to call if your funds are stolen. So how would the attack actually happen? Let's walk through the Bitcoin Zero scenario. It wouldn't look like a Hollywood movie with red sirens flashing. It would be silent. A bad actor, let's say a rogue state intelligence agency, achieves quantum supremacy. They build a stable machine with, say, 4,000 logical qubits. They don't announce this to the world. They keep it a secret. They point this machine at the Bitcoin blockchain. Now here's a technical detail that is crucial. Not all Bitcoin addresses are equally vulnerable. Modern Bitcoin addresses, the ones that start with a 3 or BC one, are hashed. This adds an extra layer of protection. The public key itself isn't revealed until you spend the money. However, the old addresses, the ones used in the early days of 2009 and 2010, are different. They use a format called pay to public key. In these transactions, the public key is exposed directly on the blockchain. It is sitting there, naked, waiting to be read. And who owns the majority of these old, exposed wallets? Satoshi Nakamoto. The creator of Bitcoin mined an estimated 1 million coins in the early days. Those coins have never moved. The public keys are visible. They are the perfect target. The attacker uses Shor's algorithm to derive Satoshi's private keys. They broadcast a transaction. Suddenly, the 1 million Bitcoin that have been dormant for 15 years start moving. The crypto markets are watching. Bots pick up the movement. Satoshi is selling. The narrative spreads instantly. But then another wallet moves, and another. It becomes clear that this isn't the creator returning. This is a breach. Trust evaporates. If the cryptography is broken, Bitcoin is just a worthless string of data. The price crashes to zero because no one will buy an asset that can be stolen at will. The miners turn off their rigs. The network halts. The experiment is over. This sounds terrifying, but we need to inject some reality into this nightmare. Are we there yet? No. The quantum computers we have today, like Google's Sycamore or IBM's Osprey, are impressive, but they are noisy. They make errors. Maintaining the delicate state of superposition is incredibly difficult. To break Bitcoin, we need error-corrected logical qubits. Most physicists estimate we are at least 10 to 15 years away from a machine capable of running Shor's algorithm at this scale. However, you shouldn't relax just yet. There is a concept in the intelligence community called Harvest Now, decrypt later. Hackers and foreign governments are scraping encrypted data from the internet right now. They are intercepting your emails, financial records, and trade secrets. They can't read them yet. It looks like gibberish but they are storing this data in massive server farms. They're waiting for Q-Day. Once the technology matures, they will feed this harvested data into the machine, and the secrets of the past 20 years will be unlocked. For Bitcoin, this timeline creates a deadline. We have a 10-year window to fix the foundation before the house collapses. The good news? Bitcoin is code. Code can be upgraded. We are not helpless. The National Institute of Standards and Technology in the U.S., has been running a global competition to find post-quantum cryptography. These are new mathematical problems, based on things like multidimensional lattices, that even quantum computers can't solve easily. Bitcoin developers are already working on proposals to implement these quantum-resistant signatures. One solution involves Lamport signatures or upgrading to Stark-based proofs. Technically, we can save Bitcoin. We can build a soft fork, an upgrade that tells the network, okay, everyone, the old lock is broken. Move your money to this new quantum-proof lock. But here lies the real danger. The threat to Bitcoin isn't just the technology, it is the politics. Bitcoin is a decentralized system. There is no CEO. There is no board of directors. Upgrading the network requires consensus. Everyone, miners, node operators, developers, and exchanges must agree to the change. If you were around for the block size wars of 2017, you know how ugly this gets. 
The community tore itself apart for years over a simple issue of how much data a block should hold. Friendships ended, companies split, and Bitcoin fractured into Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Now imagine the stakes are not efficiency, but survival. Post-quantum signatures are heavy. They take up a lot of data. Implementing them might slow down the network or increase transaction fees significantly. There will be purists who refuse to change. There will be miners who fight the upgrade because it affects their profits. If the community cannot agree on how to upgrade, we could see a catastrophic hard fork. The network could split into Bitcoin Quantum and Bitcoin Classic. This division would weaken the security of both chains, destroying the network effect and confidence just as the quantum threat arrives. And there is an even darker problem, the zombie coins. Remember the upgrade plan? Move your funds to a new address. That works for active users. But millions of Bitcoin belong to people who lost their keys years ago, or people who have passed away. These coins cannot move. No one has the keys. When the network upgrades to the new quantum secure standard, these old dormant wallets will likely have to be left behind on the old insecure protocol. They will be vulnerable. When Q-Day arrives, the quantum attackers will feast on these zombie coins. They will crack the lost wallets of the early adopters. This means millions of lost Bitcoin will suddenly wake up and flood the market. Even if your personal wallet is secure, the supply shock of millions of stolen coins hitting the market could destroy the price stability of the asset forever. So where does this leave us? Is Bitcoin doomed? Not necessarily, it is a race, a high stakes multi-billion dollar race between the engineers building the quantum machines and the cryptographers building the new shields. The NSA is moving, the banking sector is moving, and the Bitcoin developers are watching closely. It is likely that Bitcoin will evolve. The threat is too great to ignore. When the survival of the entire network is on the line, humans have a tendency to cooperate. We might see a rocky transition, we might see a panic. But digital scarcity is an idea that is here to stay. However, Bitcoin as we know it today, the exact code running on your node right now is living on borrowed time. The locks we use are destined to rust. This leads to a philosophical realization. We often think of Bitcoin as a rock, something solid and unchanging, but it isn't. It is a living organism. It must adapt to its environment or it will die. The quantum era is coming. It promises to cure diseases, solve climate change, and unlock the secrets of the universe but it also demands that we rebuild the foundation of our digital trust. The sword is being forged. It is up to us to build the armor in time. So I wanna leave you with a question. Do you trust the decentralized governance of Bitcoin to organize an upgrade in time? Or do you think human conflict and disagreement will be our downfall before the quantum computer even warms up? This is the greatest test digital money has ever faced. Let me know your predictions in the comments below. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve and understand the future of technology before it happens, make sure you are subscribed. I'll see you in the next one.